God damn, we love comics. <laughs> hey, uh, we're back again to talk about some more comic books. Uh, this time around, we're focusing on mini comics and indie comics, uh, stuff that we're buying direct from the creators in most cases. Absolutely. Uh, so what's first on the slab here? So I'm throwing down Dimensional Flats uh, by this Japanese artist who I discovered his work through the OCs. Uh, did a bunch of album covers, or had him do a bunch of album cover artwork for him. Oh, cool. And uh, great fucking band, great fucking art. And so I checked this guy out, and he just does incredible screen print uh, artwork. Uh, I have a t-shirt that I wear sometimes, too. Oh, yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. And uh, this guy's going to be at uh, Comic Arts Brooklyn this year, and so I'll actually be able to meet him, which I'm really excited. But... I'm not, oh yeah, see, he's, uh, that's the dude, <laughs> but uh, I'm not 100% sure if this is all screen printed, but holy shit, dude, wow. this is uh, really fucking beautiful artwork, crazy paneling, um, I, I can't wait to talk to this guy and just be like, I don't know how you do it, and he's always coming out with new prints. He's coming out with new comic. This is wild. And it's so thick. Like, I don't even know how many pages this is. But, Probably uh, a million, at least. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Hollow Press, I highly recommend checking uh, them out. They they put out a lot of stuff from, uh, or reprints of fucking Lightning Bolt uh, comics. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think of that collective. Can't fucking think of it. Fort Thunder. Yeah, they, they made a bunch of mini comics, but this guy's from Japan. Really great stuff. Definitely check him out. Fucking sick. Wow. Uh, this is one of the first comics I ever got. It's the first indie comic I ever got. Uh, this was something I picked up at the Comic Con in Syracuse, New York in like 1995, maybe. Damn. Um, it's actually, is there a year? 97. Okay, I was a little bit off. Look, it was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, and this is the story of a boy who gets high on modeling glue and becomes a superhero named Glue Boy. This is his origin story. It's just a quick thing. There's a little letter section in the back. And I remember my mom took this away from me <laughs> for a time. Uh, there's some weird ads back here for some books that I'll never find. <laughs> and I found it at some point in my life, and I held on to it for years and years and years. And I thought, man, what was that weird, like, glue comic? I finally got it back. I found it. I found it online. And there is a run of four issues wow. that I was able to pick up. Um, wow. And inside, you know, it, it maintains that same art style. The black um, and white, too. He's got the little Hitler stash. I think, I think he glues his uh, pubes onto his face. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, the whole thing is oh, wow. supposed to be uh, very shocking and offensive. Um, it, it wound up being really fucking stupid. Um, a lot of dumb gay jokes. A lot of, like, so he's basically being stalked by the Amish here. Um, it, it, the art, I like it, it's quirky. <laughs> but it fucking, <laughs> the humor does not hold up. However, you know, it was something that early on, this is the first time I saw a book that wasn't like a Marvel or a DC or like a, right. or like an image book. And it stuck with me for a long time. But... <laughs> I almost wonder this if is you, better than the rest. I almost wonder if you bought this from the artist. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I guess I mean to yeah. say he was giving these out. Oh, okay. He, yeah. So he was at the Comic-Con giving these out because he, he ran out of the first printing oh, of this. Okay. And I think in this, um, yeah, so that's the same art oh, in there. Oh, I see. Yeah. So he just, like, this is, like, a promo. That's awesome. Yeah, and this is actually the second printing of the first issue. This origin story was not in the first printing. I see. So he, he did this, and then when this book got reprinted, he had those pages. Wow. And I looked this dude up. I don't think he's still making comics. I could be wrong. I, did not, I could not find his name anywhere else. It's a bummer about the gay jokes, but yeah. Yeah. A product of its time. Truly. 
For all I know, the guy was like fucking 18, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so here's a little mini comic. Uh, I love Jesse Jacobs. He's going to be coming out with like a lot of great artwork. Uh, his new comic looks amazing, the photos he's been uh, sharing. But just really beautiful artwork. Uh, his his stuff's very psychedelic. Wow. And just, uh, I love the way this is printed. It's just so clean and crisp, but just so bizarre and diverse. Uh, but I, I brought a few of his books, because if you like this, definitely check out Crawl Space. Wow. Crawl Space is this, like, tripped out kind of black hole story of this uh, kid finds a a psychedelic world in their uh, washing machine and brings a friend in and then they kind of I don't know I love the style but Jesse Jacobs is definitely the, the way to go is the psychedelic stuff the only colored parts yeah that's really cool so and then there's like these little creatures and the the story goes a little out of, out of control but I, I love love his artwork so much and this is an earlier book he released, Safari Honeymoon, which he's he's incredible. Just <laughs> I don't think you can go wrong with any of his books. This all looks really good. It's just I feel like there's something for everybody in these and uh, beautiful beautiful stuff. Um, I have a stack here of books. I found out about this guy. I think through Cartoonist Kayfabe, um, this guy, uh, Alex Delaney, um, this is like a mini comic he did, The Geese of Milwaukee. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, a bunch of killer geese attack a family. And this is like a, an older book of his, I think. Hell yeah. And then he, uh, for a while did a few issues of this wow. Wrapped in Fear anthology with some other artists and writers. Um, and this is like, this is Alex's stuff right here. Damn. Um, it's a throwback to kind of outlaw and horror. There's like the horror outlaw anthologies. Yeah, um, EC Comics. And... I don't yeah. know, I like it, I like this shit. So, I got these right off of his Etsy page. And these are some of the last ones I think he had in stock of a lot of these. Damn. So I snapped those up as quick as I could. He did another one here. This is another, I think this is another earlier book uh, called Swan Song that, I don't know if this is like his brother. Hmm. Um, and this is, this is on glossy paper. And, you know, I still like the art a lot and it's a fun story. Um, kind of like post-apocalyptic kind of stuff. This is wow. one of my favorite pages. Just those, the bullet holes going through everybody. Um, pretty violent stuff. But, the thing that really got me going is his character, the Derelict. So, he also has a series called The Other Side of Town. I think this book, oh. yeah, it's like a flip book there. Um, this, he printed it on, so I think he works at a print shop. Okay. He printed it on this stuff that feels like newsprint, and here's where I think his art like really shines. Yeah, yeah. Like, it looks so much better on this paper it's than on the glossy paper. Really well. Yeah. Um, and these stories are dark, <laughs> hyper violent, um, just gritty suspense. Um, that's <laughs> that's a pin up someone else did. Um, kind of just see here. I, I like the, the use of a lot of black. Yeah. Uh, it gets pretty gnarly. It's some American Psycho type shit. Jeez. Um, and then, yeah, you just see here, more, more of that, but this paper, you know, so these are the books I think he did most recently. Mm -hmm. I know he's working on a new book called, it's like only, Survival is for the Strong or something? I don't know what it's called. Um, but the most recent thing I got from him is oh, this, uh, Derelict short story, right? Again, written on that, that same kind of paper. Yeah. And this, uh, he's like huffing paint in the, uh, the logo. Wow, that's great. From the paint can comes to life. <laughs> I like that he's not afraid to get silly and like, 
Mixo Styles. Yeah. But he did this like embossing on here, which is, I hope that shows up on camera. Like that's this nice raised gold embossing on here. And I, I believe he did that in the shop he works at, so. Yeah, this, I I really like this comic. You, I think you uh, let me read through this, but uh, yeah, this one's awesome. Yeah, that's like a little one shot he did for, I don't know, some event. Um, yeah, so Alex Delaney, uh, he's got his stuff on Etsy. Check it out. And this guy, I think I kind of found him somehow, <laughs> but his name's Killer Acid. He he does he's worked with a lot of artists, uh, Mac Mac DeMarco, Mac and, Miller. Uh, I think he did something for Fish. I don't know, but the dude's from Philly, and then I think he lives in Brooklyn right now. But this is a uh, an old art comic he he made. Some pretty great stuff. Uh, obviously very. Uh, marijuana friendly <laughs> and uh just i don't know he's <laughs> he it reminds me like of like newer mad magazine stuff yeah yeah uh definitely check out killer acid but this is like his new comic uh that he released maybe a month or two ago but this looks really good um these are a lot of his uh comics that he shared on his instagram but it's just having them printed just looks great and then there's all these extra stuff that he throws in here and wow. uh, I don't know I, I really love his work I love his storytelling he's really imaginative his enamel pins are really great <laughs> definitely check him out killer acid damn but yeah boom that's really cool um these are some books from HTML Flowers, who I don't know their real name. I honestly don't know either. So, like, 2012, 2013, I, I don't know. It was it was a number of years ago now. I found them on SoundCloud. Um, I think through Aoi, who's like another Australian. Th th this person's from Australia. Another Australian producer who works with a lot of rappers I love. Uh, GDP, no emotion, a lot of people. Um, then, <laughs> later, they had a, like a couple collaborative albums they did under different names, and one of them was under the HTML Flowers name. Um, I looked them up, and they do comics, which, I mean, I think the comics are kind of the main gig. Uh, I don't know if the music is, like, as consistent as the comics are, mm. but this is uh, No Visitors, so this is, like, I got issues three, I think, and four, these are about, so the person has like a chronic illness, and this is kind of like a, sort of like a diary comic almost, but it's, it's funny, so I don't know, I, I'm assuming some of it's exaggerated, but it's about like living, you know, with that chronic illness and being in and out of the hospital. I almost wanted to say it's cystic fibrosis, but I, I don't remember. Yeah, my understanding is like that's what they tell you you have when they don't know what you have. Mm -hmm. Um, and... Man, I don't know. Like, the whole ethic on these, the coloring. Yeah. It, it's super DIY. This has never touched a computer. Um, they pretty much go direct with everything. They talk about their work process in one of these books. And I just... I love the cartooning. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. It's dark. It's very heavy. It's very, very heavy. Uh, this is another one that they did, which is more of like a... This borderline's on like a zine. Yeah. It's not really... There's no narrative there. There's some mini kind of comic stuff in there. Um, I think the last thing I got from them, I like this too, because it's got these like, the other little things in here in different paper colors, different, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. That's sick. Um, this. Werewolf Jones and Sons. So I was confused by this. You told me <laughs> that this is not their character, right? No, this is uh, Simon uh, Hans Hanselman, uh, who's also from Australia. He's from Tasmania. He lives in Seattle now. But uh, it's it's funny, though. Like, so this is Simon's artwork. Um, but you can see... But this is not. Yeah, this is uh, HTML Flowers. And you can kind of see he kind of has the Bernstein Bears... Totally. Uh, <laughs> ...style with it, and I love that. And he just... As far as I know, I mean, they've been friends for a while. They were making comics uh, together. 
and he just HTML Flower is really related to the characters and just wanted to keep writing them and Simon's like sure go for it man and uh, so they've been I think they have three comics now that's, these are really good yeah they're the, pretty crazy again these are really dark very crass comics they might look kind of cutesy at like first glance um, I, I've often been skeptical of you know furry animal kind of funny <laughs> animal comics sure. uh, but I fucking love these and that cover is sweet. Yeah. I like this stuff too because, like, you know, it just looks like a like a handmade zine. I'm I'm assuming this is just like straight from the fucking Photocop photocopier. Yeah. yeah. And keeping in the same vein, here's Simon Hanselman's new uh, mini comic that he put out. This is uh, following the Meg and Mog story. Um, there's like his main characters, Meg, uh, who's a witch, a uh, Mog, who's uh, the cat, Werewolf Jones, and Booger, uh, who's uh, the trans character in it, and it's just really incredible. He has like a mail bag. Uh, you know, this is all kind of like what you're talking about, like where it's, you know, the ink and just like straight to the photocopier. Uh, really great work, and I love that <laughs> there's just sexuality and how these characters have like grown. Um, I didn't bring the other, but like if if you do really oh, like wow. the work, uh, Fanographics. This is uh, Simon's new new book that came out this year, and this kind of the fourth book in a series. So there's Mega Hex, uh, one year later, and um, man, I the third ones, yeah. But anyways, it's beautifully. Uh, it has wow the prints. <laughs> I, never, I didn't know this was like a thing. <laughs> yeah, and then um, wow, I've never seen their work si colored. Simon watercolors uh, all the work, and so it's penned, written by, lettered by. But again, here's you know trying to get the uh, food stamps and you know things like that, and just yeah. You know, so it's like pretty hard stories for the most part, and. It looks really cutesy, but holy shit, some of these stories just uh, make me cry. Um, it took me forever when I started seeing photos of this character to realize that it was the author cosplaying as their own character. Oh yeah. And not just like a, a, a like a promo. Like I didn't. I, <laughs> oh, I understand. I, yeah. This whole thing has been very confusing to me to see other artists doing the same character and also seeing it like in different formats, seeing it online. And if you buy it from Fanagraphics, you do get a mini comic oh, wow. that Simon uh, made. What's that and like? Some like deleted cool. scenes, and uh, just I don't want to show it all because I'm sure you'd be mad. But some more <laughs> phallic werewolf wow. Jones comics. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here, here's a jam that he did with uh, Nick Thornburn, who has a penguin comic uh, through Fanagraphics. But he's also been making a lot of comics. Uh, you might know him from the Unicorns, Islands, and some other bands. But uh, I really love his comic characters, and they jammed on this together. So it's like they kind of... Uh, there's some comics from each of them, but then there's also them doing the other's character. So there's Nick Thornburn doing... <laughs> I love <laughs> when people Mog, do that. And, uh, and then later... Uh, Simon does penguins, and I don't know, it's, it's, this is really fun. Pretty dark, and, uh, like, this is kind of, like, the story of them as artists, <laughs> and they both <laughs> hang themselves at the end, which is a possible dark ending for both comic, uh, artists. Great! <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh... I guess on a similar note, this is someone who you might know from the band Screaming Females. This is Marissa Paternoster. I think I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a zine that she put out a while back. I got at a Screaming Females show. Beautiful. And there's some sequential art kind of stuff in here. This isn't a straight up comic, but more of a collection of drawings. Um, but man, I'm way into this stuff. Like I, I'd seen her shit. I think she did all the record covers for Screaming Females. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and I've, man, I've just been way into her stuff for a long time, so when I saw this, I had to get it. Really, I don't know. I don't know, how to, I don't know what to say about it. it. It's it's a style that really 
is its own to me. It, it's very meticulous. There's yeah. like... This thing she does, where it's like the, like the scales, I see that in a lot of her work. And I just imagine she's just like chipping away at these pieces for a long fucking time. Especially these ones are so dense. So... Incredible line work. Yeah. I I don't know if this is even around anymore. They have like a short run of these out on a tour. And I don't know if she's done more since then. I'm hmm. curious. But she's really accessible. Um, I'm sure if you dig it, you can get in touch with them directly and see like how to get a copy. But it was cool to get this direct from the source. So, switching it up a little, uh, this is Matt Furry. I love his artwork. Um, sadly, his his character, uh, Pepe, has been abused. But this is from 2006. I think the abusers have moved on. I think they've adopted new characters. I just, yeah, okay. But, so this is basically, like, just fun stoner comics and just, you know, kind of partying, hanging out with your dudes in like your early 20s and uh, just really great artwork. He does incredible paintings, but yeah, you know, this is just some of his comics uh, that he put together. And I believe there's like four or five of these and uh, Fantagraphics uh, recently collected that them. That cover looks so good. In this beautiful book where they did this wonderful thing <laughs> Where it's oh wow, and then the ink starts changing colors, and I didn't notice this until I was halfway through reading this, and being like, "Holy shit!" So it's just great stuff, really fun. Do they reprint the covers in here? I don't think so. Man, but yeah, these covers are uh, incredible. That is one thing that drives me nuts about like, especially like smaller books or any kind of collection, is when they don't put the covers in. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. I because. <laughs> I want to fucking look at them. Yeah. I feel like it's part of the context of the book. Oh, I, totally. My Brat Pack collection doesn't have the covers in it. And the Brat Pack covers are oh, so nice. Yeah. <laughs> I think about that every time I read that. So I look at it on my shelf and it nags at me. This is a pretty recent uh, Damn. Matt Curry comic. This is him taking back Pepe. And so there's uh, comics that he, he made, but then he also opened it up to... Uh, other artists and so there's like a lot of <laughs> just fun wild stuff some jams a little spank bank material yeah uh, a nice little uh, <laughs> Pepe fold out because you know Pepe's all about love man wow feels good <laughs> <laughs> I really like the background on that yeah so. Is that like a little activity book kind of section there? Yeah. Like a crossword it's puzzle really and stuff? Funny. Um, oh, some Mad Libs. <laughs> so, I That's don't know. That's sweet. J definitely check out Matt Furry. He's an incredible artist. Incredibly uh, loving dude. Speaking of... Oh, shit. There's a Matt Furry interview <laughs> in the new Bubbles, and I have all the issues. I can only find one, three, and four right now. Sure. I <laughs> definitely didn't put number two in the shredder. Um, this is something that I saw online and picked it up not knowing for sure if it was going to be good because um, I, I hate everything. <laughs> but I love Nancy and there's like the first issue has this... Uh, oh, that's in there. Oh, I do know why that's in there. Um, <laughs> the first issue has the program from this performance called Music for Nancy, or Music from Nancy, where it, it was just some art school bullshit, but they took uh, Nancy strips and turned them into, like, musical staffs and did this, like, performance, and they have an in-depth interview with all the people who were involved in it. They go through the whole process, and there's other feature I really like a lot where it's like bizarre stuff he finds on eBay mm -hmm. and this is the kind of stuff that I really love about the zine where it's like these ephemeral weird quirky things related to comic fandom or comic books and yeah. that like I just would have never known ever existed um, like 
vintage Bill Watterson drawings from a yearbook he was, you know, working on in 76. That's crazy. Um, but, you know, the real meat and potatoes is extremely in-depth interviews with people in comics. Like, uh, this one has someone who worked on a lot of early uh, translations of Japanese comics. Yeah, you can see who's in this one. Oh, yeah. There's a... Uh... Oh, yeah. And Japan science fiction the, and these are these are six bucks a piece. They are very meaty. It's extremely passionate, and you are getting them directly from the person who I think their name is Ryan. Hmm. Could be wrong, but man, uh, if you don't have this and you like comics, get it. It's like <laughs> it's the best comics fanzine out there right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean. And tell them Damn. Flashburg Comics sent you. <laughs> please, please do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here's this dinky comic I made <laughs> way back when I... I've never uh, seen this. Oh, man, I, I sold this on a uh, tour. So, like, I was a armed security officer in uh, Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Uh, my copy has coffee stains, but uh, this is all I have left because I sold them all while I was on tour. Um, yeah, I used the stamp from work, and yeah, these are just kind of like jams while I was sweating my ass off, and, uh, <laughs> or just like weird poems that I wrote, and, uh, I made this and, uh, Xeroxed them, and, yeah, stapled them together, or no, I actually had, uh, my friend, uh, Chantel, uh, sew these, so, yeah, doodles and poems I make at work, and... Just to jump on the self-made, uh, this is from uh, Dom Monet. Oh Life man! on Saturn. I um, never. I don't think I ever saw this in person. Yep, and uh, Lydia, uh, his wife, colored it, and I honestly don't know this guy that is his writing partner. Like, you know, maybe I'm. I don't think he dumb. lives in the area anymore. Okay. Um, I, this is great. Yeah. Wow. He was just giving these away for free at Fantastic Planet, but... What the fuck? Check his fucking artwork out. Life on Saturn. Uh, Baldur's Dash is his uh, awesome uh, jam variety show TV skit thing. Like, it's it's. I think amazing. he's also featured in the pages of Trashburg Comics. Oh, you're right. That's a great place to check out his artwork. <laughs> wow, I never... Knew that. That's really crazy. Yeah. You know, actually, Paul might still have some. So, check out Fantastic Planet. Ask for, ask for that comic. It's really fucking good. Um. What you got? <laughs> this? Oh. This came with two little doodles. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Spider-Man and a Joker. Damn. Um. This is someone who I found in the cartoonist kayfabe ringside seats facebook group <laughs> uh tony mcmillan was posting i don't know like pages from an upcoming issue of the serious creatures comic i haven't gotten to read the second issue yet wow. but i was like immediately attracted to the art and so i picked up one issue and then when i like realized what i was doing i bought the second one minutes later and <laughs> thankfully he refunded my shipping for <laughs> Oh wow! Because okay, I did a, uh, I did two orders separately. I do that a lot when I'm buying comics online from like a, an Etsy shop or you a get website. Excited. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> oh man! So, uh, yeah, wow, this is incredible work. It, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it looks like it's somewhat digital. Mm -hmm. Like the lettering is definitely digital. Yeah. And I have seen some of his raw pages, so I know he has drawing this stuff. I think the coloring is all digital. Okay. But it works. Yeah. Um, my only complaint is, I wish it were hand lettered entirely. I think this is a font he made out of his own handwriting. That's pretty cool, though. But man, I really dig it. And the cover on the second one, I think, is just so sweet. Um, oh, this was the panel I first saw. This is what sold me. Yeah. That's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, so... This is a monthly book, I believe, that he's doing. Wow. And he has other books out as well. Um, I just picked up these two. You can buy a subscription. It's cheaper if you dig it. But 
I don't know, I think it really works and it's awesome to be able to get this, again, direct from the artist. This person is working hard. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah, there's, there's ads on the back. I don't know if these are like fake movie ads, <laughs> but I don't know. It's just the whole That's presentation hilarious. is really fucking solid and they feel good, you know? Yeah. Like they're printed on like a slight gloss, but that, again, that works. Mm -hmm. I don't always like that, but it, it, you know, it's happening. That's a great share. <laughs> so here's some uh, really cutesy comics. Wow. Uh, Allison Conway is incredibly uh, talented artist. Uh, some of these comics have been featured on Vice.com. They were running like a uh, Nick Gavin Gazin was uh, kind of like in control of picking out some really good comics, web comics for them, and uh, a, a pill bug's life. And these are just these beautiful mini comics that she made. Um, I wish these were like a hundred times bigger <laughs> because the artwork is just I they're they're magic. And they're just really cute, and she's incredibly nice. And uh, the color is so cool. And you know, she does all of this. Oh, that's so sweet. I didn't even see that. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, like and so like as seen on Vice. Um, but I believe maybe this is the one she released. Oh, no. Um, well, anyways, she I met her in New York City this year, and at Mocha, which is the cartoonist something. I. I don't know my acronyms. Mad. Mad. Oh, cartoonist. Ah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, those are sweet. Yeah. Uh, she's also gonna be at uh, Comic Arts Brooklyn. So if you are going November second at Pratt Institute, I believe. I love that you can see a little splinter from the paper cutter on here. Yeah, like she definitely made these herself, which is really fucking cool. That's very endearing. Yeah. Uh, this is a few issues, going back to the musicians making comics. This is a few issues of Fuff, which I think was originally printed as Guff <laughs> by a uh, New York City anti-folk musician, Jeffrey Lewis. Yeah, originally print, published on newsprint as Guff number 2 in 2005. Hmm. Um, these were something a friend picked up for me when they went to go see him, and I, I've seen Jeffrey Lewis play a couple times now. Man, I, I was listening to Jeffrey Lewis for like over 10 years yeah. before I ever saw him live. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got to see him twice in one year. Oh, man. And uh, I also picked up from him, I don't have it here, but a, a book that is his thesis on Watchmen, and it's one of the most meticulous, insane yeah. dissections of a work I've ever read. But it really works. Uh, I was trying to get a second copy, and uh, he doesn't make any more. <laughs> he, he's like, I might in the future. I don't know. It was just like his college thesis that he like edited and then uh, printed uh, as a, like a short run on that one tour. That's so really cool. Um, so these are a mix of a lot of them are like uh, diary comics, or I guess you know, like him telling stories of being on the road or traveling. Um, and then some of it's more fantastical stuff. Uh, Incredible line work. Yeah. I really like his work. I don't know how to put it. It, like... It's just got, like, a very... Uh, it's a very solid style. And one thing I really like about this book is that... When you go... I guess it's way like travel logs, biography, fiction, whimsy. That's a very good way to break down what is in these books. You flip it over, and it's like... You know, this part's continued inside, but then right here, continued yeah. from inside. He, like, plays the form a lot on this comic. And I've never seen someone do something like that That's before. That's really cool. Um, he just has a lot of fun with it. So, Jeff Lewis, man, he just, I think he has a new album coming out, like, in two weeks. He's always recording and touring, so definitely check him out. This blew up the um, the Crass songs tribute. He did like a a collection of like Crass covers, mm -hmm. kind of putting the uh, the anarchist <laughs> propaganda into a form that people who don't like uh, anarcho punk might might listen to the words. A little bit more digestible. Yes, and then uh, I believe this is like his uh, his biggest record was the uh, what's it called? 
It's the ones who've cracked that the light shines through that he did with his brother, uh, Jack. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those are from Rough Trade Records, but these you can get direct from him. Uh, I think it's, you know, you just Google Jeff Lewis, but Jeffrey Lewis. Um, he's, he's really cool. He's, yeah. he's like a DIY madman who's been making stuff forever for so long and making so much stuff and it's always of a very consistent quality yeah a lot of heart yeah uh his his website's really great too because it looks like a illustrated comic book yes it that. looks it, like pretty much like yeah, this it's it's wonderful so definitely check him out jeffrey lewis yeah he's one of the most true people i've ever met true <laughs> uh so now this is another guy I met at uh, MoCA this year, Emmanuel, uh, I'm so sorry. Guerrero? Guerrero, yes. And so he has written and illustrated all these comics. They're uh, Rizzo printed, R-I-S-O, right? Rizzograph? Something yeah, like Rizograph, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I'm sure one's correct. <laughs> uh, incredibly uh, wonderful. Um, I've seen these. These illustrations are beautiful. I love how it's printed on this paper. The, the texture is feels good. Look at this background. You follow this guy on Instagram? Yes. I, I think, oh, yeah, I share the shit yeah. out of his stuff. Uh, I, like, I feel like I know this dude from Instagram. And, <laughs> this is definitely one of my favorite characters. This uh, <laughs> cactus motherfucker. He's, he's just like a little bastard. And... Uh, it, it's so great, but like, I don't know, it's, this is really up my alley, it's cute, but like, it, I think it's for everybody, he, look at that sass. He hasn't been at it for that long, right? No, I, I want to say it's been the last three years, really, and he's just been hitting the, uh, the scene, this is his new one that just came out. Cool, I remember and, seeing him, uh, like, post something where he's like, wow, look at my progress from like a year ago, and like, it's like, god damn, this guy's putting in work. Um. Totally. And wow. I don't know. Like, it's just, he's just getting better and better. Like, this is his that most recent. That is so recent. sick. Yeah. And, like, I just, I can't Man, recommend it his work enough. Man, it looks so good. Yeah. It's, it's if the, they don't give him a cartoon show. <laughs> the printing is so striking on this. Yeah. Wow. Really fucking Man, good. Man, that's good. And the emotion he puts in his characters is just uh, incredible. Oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah. There's a there's a playlist on Spotify. Check out the Desert Baby playlist. <laughs> wow, you can get these online. Yep, you can uh, check out his website, and uh, I think he has an Etsy. But definitely check him out on Instagram wow. too, because he shares a lot of his work and uh, kind of like a behind the scenes, like how he uh, uh, puts everything together. And I don't know, it's wonderful, wonderful stuff. This is something that is kind of going more again into zine territory um another one with the hand sewn binding there mm -hmm. uh this will be our year scenes from the 1975 barrington high school yearbook um kate madeira i, I think I, I don't know if i pronounced that last name right this is someone it's the sister of someone who i know through diy playing music uh they're based out of nashville i believe and it's kind of like, you know, wow. she like redid a bunch of these high school portraits. I don't these are just like pictures from the yearbook mm -hmm. that she that she's gone ahead and drawn, but this style is awesome. It's like it's it's crazy to have that much like scratchiness and still maintain character and detail. Yeah. Wow. So this is something I I think I did a zine trade with her. I also got a zine she did about Point Break, like the movie. Um, <laughs> this is someone who, from from what I understand, her and her sister are both like extremely active artists. Um, lots of zines, lots of music. I wish I had more of their stuff, because I really, I think this one is so cool. And these are these kinds of things where, I don't know, maybe she did like a hundred of these. They're gone forever. <laughs> so. Damn. Yeah, man, I love that background too. Like just the yeah, it works. That's it's the kind beautiful. of stuff that like when you photocopy it, it just has such a distinct look. Yep, love it. Anyway, that's a sweet one. Boom. And now to sweet sweet digital. <laughs> uh, 
This is my buddy Patrick Sparrow. I guess I say we're buddies because we've been talking a little bit online. He has been featured on uh, adultswim.com. Adultswim.com has some comics, but this shit's great. I love Peeper Creeper. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that Instagram has been taking down because as you can see, some of it is, um, you know, some of it's, you know, just cute and funny and then some of it's a little bit raunchier and then there's like some 9-11 uh, jokes so if you can't handle that I guess this is not for you <laughs> but that's, that's a fair way to put it he's uh he's he's a pretty great guy I've only seen his stuff on Instagram <laughs> what if I really like it a lot yeah uh, it's pretty sweet to see it printed I never you know, I have this disconnect sometimes with Instagram artists who I just like, I, I forget their work <laughs> exists outside yeah. of that realm. I've seen that Spider-Man strip before. I love that. That got taken down. <laughs> this is sick. Yeah. I, I love his stuff. Um, he, he made these. I gotta pick these up. Yeah. And I don't know. He has stickers. He has t-shirts. Um, he's such a good dude. Like, I don't know. He's. It's such a raunchy character. Yeah, and he just has fun with it, and like he knows it's ridiculous, but you know, just like fucking rock and roll, man. man. Oh, and then this one has uh, some other characters that he's kind of playing with, like Hamzig and uh, <laughs> the Muscle Wizard, which I really hope he continues with, because yes. uh, this has been uh, pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> I I've seen a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I really think that character works. Yeah. So I, wow. Sick I highly recommend. Patrick Sparrow. Very nice presentation overall. Oh, on yeah. Those. Yeah, these covers are just really, like, really beautiful. And the way it continues on the back. Oh, yeah, for sure. I like that when yeah. it feels like a very complete package like that. This reminds me of some Atari shit. Yeah. And this is all from this year, which, like, fuck. Who the fuck knows where he's going? Um, Man. I'm so excited. Uh, these are two mini zine comic dealies from... Sarah Ayton, who performs under S. Ayton. This is like in the classic, you know, mini comic kind of. I don't know what you'd call this this style, but I've I've seen this a lot where sometimes people kind of like fold it there, mm -hmm. but she flips it around and has some stuff on the back. That's awesome. So these are like you know, I mean, this tells a short story about where she's at in life and how she's feeling about stuff. Um, very confessional kind of thing, and then this is like, in a similar style, it's these collected drawings and writings mm -hmm. that, you know, I don't know, there's something real unique about getting this kind of stuff from a person, because it, it really is kind of like, just like reading their diary, more Super or less. Super intimate. Um. Yeah. So, I think I got these from her. I don't know, we, we did a tour together back in like 2011. I may have picked these up then, Frick. or I could have gotten them on. <laughs> well, it's a small world. <laughs> yeah, it's a no, very small world. <laughs> DIY, baby. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, if you're in the in the Northeast, you've met everyone involved in DIY at least once, and maybe you spent like two weeks of your life with them. <laughs> and if you're looking uh, for us to play your living room and uh, really bum you out with our tunes, uh, please book us. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you can only uh, pay us five dollars and feed us pizza. Uh, I'll also take shitty spaghetti. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, so this next one is uh, Andrew Buck. Um, I believe, oh yeah, so this is his third printing of this, but uh, this is his jam on uh, Blue Velvet and, is it Riverdale, I want to say? Uh, that what? CW show? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. But like Archie. It's like the Archie show. Yeah. So this is uh, <laughs> a Blue oh, Velvet. Oh, you showed uh, this to me. Yeah. And it's uh, really great. I mean, he just like, I believe it's just working with Sharpies. But um, he has his own comic, which I I'm, I don't know what I'm waiting for. But I haven't picked that one up yet. But it's uh, like Satan something. But it's very Jack Kirby inspired. But this is... He has another one where it's Archie with um, a racer head, which I really want to pick up as well. So is this like an Archie and 
and uh, Blue Velvet. Blue Velvet. I've never seen that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So these are all just like... I've tried. Yeah. But I highly recommend uh, his stuff. And he's been making incredible uh, artwork for uh, commission, too. Um, pretty much anything you want him to uh, work on, he's... I really like his style. Yeah, dang and, it. Uh, Number two out of a run of 30. Yeah. But check him out. Oh. And... <laughs> Neezine. N-E-E-Zine, baby. Uh, this fucking comic blew my mind. Dave Neeson. Holy shit, dude. You're a fucking madman. Uh... I don't think I was ready for this. Wow. Uh, like, I'm trying to make my own comics, and then I see this. This is professional as shit, dude. Uh, he's such a good guy. i so friendly, and, I mean, it's just... He's making all the type of shit I'm into, and... I don't know. Is, just, there, is there no words in here? I want to say it's all silent. And it's just, it's very, uh, kind of has like that trippy Charles Burns, uh, vibe, you know, and like, I just get lost and just the amount of time he works on his stuff is just uh, mind blowing. And like the pages I've seen from the new, uh, comic are incredible. Like, so the, this is going to continue on and, uh, he's already working with like, uh, fucking, I don't know, just like. He's, he's developing as a cartoonist, but even this being his first comic, dude, out of the park. That is really sick. Um, this is three mini comics from a, another, another DIY friend. She writes comics under the name R. Huff. Uh, I met this person through, <laughs> through a rapper named Epic. <laughs> Edward Pick, uh, he was like, he was like, man, I got this friend. Like, I think, I think you two would really connect. Like, you should try to do some work together. So, we did a track together for uh, for a mixtape I put together a while back. And around the same time, I was following her online. She started posting these like pretty wild comics, and and I was like, man, what do you have like other stuff? In, you know that you have you've printed. So the stuff she sent me, nothing like the stuff she was posting online. Um. And that's the thing that drives me crazy is I think that stuff was like all on her Tumblr. Mm. It probably got taken down. Yeah. You know? Fuck Tumblr. During the great Tumblr purge. <laughs> um, so this one, uh, real here, is uh, <laughs> has the genre, horror. And it, it's just a mini horror comic. It's so cool. And it's, you know, it's very open in, to interpretation. Damn. Oh my god. And that's it. So yeah, that, that you can try you can try her Tumblr there. But then she also has been doing these like X-rated comics. So this one is this porn comic where she's <laughs> she's praying at this grave, giant dong comes out, you know, <laughs> the the action goes down. <laughs> the action goes down. <laughs> fucking, it, you know. So I I believe this is her like comic avatar. Okay. You know, th yeah. this the, a, a version of this character appears in a lot of her work. <laughs> um, there's her Instagram handle. She's always posting stuff on there. And then uh, there's another mini that she did a while back that I just got recently from her in a trade. And uh, how would you say that? Thal Thalitha? Yeah. This character was <laughs> being trapped <laughs> under a mountain for 24 years. Now she's free. She realizes she has these uh, sexual powers that, you know, uh, make men stronger. So she she goes around uh, banging out a bunch of uh, bums and old men <laughs> until she realizes that, like, you know, she needs to start getting paid for her work. <laughs> I love that. Hell yeah. Um, these are really fun. And I, I, this is another person who I know she's got more shit out there mm -hmm. that, like, I'll probably never get. I'll probably never see it drives me nuts in a way, you know? But I'm very uh, grateful for the ones I do have, so check her out online. Fuck yeah. Speaking of Tumblr, I found Sophie Franz through Tumblr uh, back in the day before the Great Purge, 
and I think it was artwork from the experts, which was published. Uh, I can't even tell you because it just looks like logos, but her work is incredible. Oh, Retrofit Comics. My bad, guys. Uh, retrofitcomics.com. I believe they still have some available. Holy shit. Wow. Beautiful cartoonist. This work is just so fucking good. I, I'm freaking out just looking at this again. Um, Damn, the coloring is wild. Yeah, and like just the story is just so good and I don't know. Like it's I, What's I the really paper hope. like is that Wow, it feels good. Feels good, guys. That's the thing I like about these indie books too is that like th there's a very tactile experience to them that you don't get out of you know. Oh yeah. Every newsstand comic kind of feels largely feels the same. And I don't know, like the the story really holds up. This is it's all right here. Man. Uh, I really hope... Uh, I know she's working on a graphic novel. I don't know uh, when that's coming out, but... That is tight. Just incredible work. I love uh, that logo. Yeah. Just... The, what a great cover, too. Like... Great work. Uh, this is a jam between Oliver Hibbert and Jacqueline yeah. Denton. Uh, Oliver Hibbert... He's made uh, incredible tarot cards, which were really big on uh, Tumblr for a while. And Those then tarot he, decks were wild. Yeah, then he jammed with uh, the Flaming Lips and made some artwork. So, uh, this is from 2015. Uh, I believe it's still available, but their artwork really works well together. Um, wow. Sometimes it's hard for me to know when, like, Oliver j joins in, but then this is uh, definitely uh, Jacqueline. And, uh, they just make really, and this is, you know, glossy, but, like, I think it works, and, like, the colors definitely pop. It's, yeah, it's super vibrant. Yeah. And just really beautiful, uh, trippy. <laughs> and, like, the story's pretty wild. Damn. This never came to fruition, sadly, as far as I know. Uh, the Jizz zine, which I was really excited about, it was definitely them collaborating more. Um, wow. I, I think something happened between them, but that's, yeah, none of my business. But at oh. least we have this incredible uh, piece of art. Yes. At least that happened between them. Yes. And brought <laughs> a few more. Uh, this is one of my favorite cartoonists, uh, but this is his uh, comic, Blamo, which he's been doing for 10 years. Um, this is from 2014. This is... Uh, oh, shit. Well, yeah, so since 2007, he's been doing Blamo, and I think this is the most recent uh, issue. But these are just, like, a collection of, like, the comic strips he was doing for a paper... Um, oh, wow, they're some, just, like, photocopied right in there. Yeah, some historical uh, comics he's done. Uh, just, his work just wow. goes all over the spectrum. I've heard this name. I can't say I've ever, like, knowingly seen their art. And, uh, I don't know. Like, it's just seeing his style and, like, you know, these are, like, diary entries, I, I believe. And just... You know, just incredible cartoonist and like and so you with Blamo you really get to see him develop as an artist and just like what oh, style he's man. working in and I mean he's just a sweet dude he's living in uh, Charleston South Carolina now with his wife a and, larger uh, format book here yeah so this is the one that came out I have seen I've seen some of these pages before look at that like even just his <laughs> like he can just paint nature for the is this, rest of Is this life. him? This is him, yeah. Alright, because so I've, I've, seen, his... I've seen this character yeah. in strips before. And then he has like a, a few books collected uh, with fanographics and I'm, I mean, you can see his work in so much, but it's Damn. historical. Uh, I guess he has like a graphic novel with a Johnny, J Johnny Appleseed, which is, you know, pretty funny to me, but I haven't uh, gotten to read that one yet. But just the work he puts in that is so cool. And this is a very tiny run of uh, that he put out to um, maybe like a month or two ago. But it's notes and pieces of his process. 
Um, so this is just like really <laughs> uh, an entire illustrated contents of the zine. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You're copywritten. So check them out. Write that motherfucker. And, uh, you know, wow. like just he visited all these places to make sure it's like historically accurate and like his sketches and, and what his experiences were there. And I don't know. It's pretty pretty incredible i i love his style because it really feels like it's just like straight to inks a lot of the time mm -hmm. you know yeah and it i mean not always but especially when he's doing certain things like these like i don't know it just feels it feels so like immediate <laughs> do you know what i'm trying to say yeah totally like from his head to the paper yeah which is damn so good and i think i have a few more if you want to keep going Hell yeah. <laughs> so I don't have the full collection, but this is Pope Hats. I've been hearing about this book. Ethan uh, Ridley, I believe is how you pronounce his name, but uh, wow. Incredible work. Uh, this is kind of like uh, Blamo and, and uh, Eight Ball in the sense of like you get to see this cartoonist really developed and I mean they from from the beginning it's so good like this is such high quality ad house uh, puts these out they're from Richmond Virginia I believe and uh, got like a Tim Tim vibe sometimes here totally and just every every book is just so good uh, I really love the style and the story is great so is it like a continuing story it, yeah definitely a continuing story so i imagine this is going to get uh picked up but i mean you can see how much his uh art has developed over time damn but yeah pope hats definitely be on the lookout for those wow i love seeing the books uh change like in size and format as they go on oh yeah and it's just like playing around Another call out to Retrofit, publishing Jack Teagle's fucking awesome wrestle comic. <laughs> wow. Oh man. Uh, this is from 2015. Man, I love these big panels. These are just, I love his simplicity, but like he keeps the character designs uh, all the way through and just, it's really fun action. And I don't know, like, I definitely love the, the size of this comic. It's so big. And it feels like a Sunday morning paper comic. Yeah, it, it's, it's, he's from uh, England, and uh, that's definitely his website, and you can see it, and you can go to it, and check out his artwork. Damn, wait, let's that back. That's cool. This is another uh, comic he did, <laughs> The Muscle Kids, and I got this because it looked just, this is his stuff in color. But, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, more wrestling stuff. <laughs> but it's just, it's so good. And I, I really, really love uh, his artwork so much. It's really fun. Yeah. And, yeah, it's really inspiring. Man, I it love just, the big panels. Yeah, the big panels are pretty great. Like, it's, he, he does a good use. And, like, you know, the flow of the comic is, is really, really good. Really strong. Cool. I got one last one. And this is definitely from a uh, cartoonist kayfabe. Uh, this is some really amazing uh, mini comics called Cutaway Comics from uh, David Zetwich. Uh, he's been featured on cartoonist kayfabe these, oh, the detail in these little mini comics are extraordinary, and I love these so much. Like, I wish there was, like, hundreds of these. Or, sorry, I said Dave, but it's actually Dan Zetwich. Um, I can't recommend this enough. That shit is crazy. His artwork <laughs> is so good, and his style, like, changes, and, but yeah, the, the cutaway... Are these just, like... Oh, man, what are these printed on? 
they're kind of like it's weird. They're like they're thinner, but like still a little glossy. Damn. And... Man, these feel so complete. Yeah, they feel like a little more. It, yeah, it's a tactile thing. It feels a little more complete than like your average photocopier comic in a way. Mm -hmm. But damn. Yeah, really, really good. Where'd you get these? Uh, from him, Dan Zetwich. Shit. Yeah, he's really incredible. Uh, also, wow, he makes these beautiful screen printed. <laughs> he screen prints these himself. Uh, this is his Redbird series. Redbird 1 and Redbird uh, 2 are completely sold out, but I was able to get uh, this beautiful uh, wow. piece of art. Damn, like the gold only just showed up in my eyes. <laughs> um, but it's like, I don't think this could ever be collected because it's this whole experience. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like the, the paper quality change. It'd be too expensive and, or it'd be compromised. And it's just, this is all made by him. Like he prints these God and damn. puts this all together. Like it's, this is his passion. This is his love of comics. These look so good. And he's just an extraordinary cartoonist. And like the styles. Man, that looks good. His maps, everything. Like there's, there's The so lettering much. is sick. Yeah. Like, go back for a second. What am I looking at here? I can't even tell anymore. Man, that lettering is really getting me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then, uh, so it's funny. This is issue three. This is issue four. And uh, definitely a little smaller. But it's, you know, again, screen printed. Yeah, it's so complex with the printing. <laughs> And like each, you can see how it's a little cut off, but like it, it works and it's just straight from him, man. It's beautiful. Wow. So that's like a two color press he's doing like on the. Yeah, I would say this one definitely. Wow. Yeah. No, so... this is three. Yeah. Cause there's the the yeah. white and then the gold and then the neon green yeah yeah wow so that is crazy but yeah man that looks so good. that's that's what we're ending on i think and well yeah so we'll give a quick plug to ourselves we have three issues of our anthology this is the latest one dropping october 25th 2019 uh, these are straight from Plattsburgh, New York, all North Country creators. I kind of don't want to open them even. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you grab this one that has like poo on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened to that one. That, that's that's my personal copy. But pick these up, Trashbird.com, if you want to check it out. It's uh, just a just an anthology of. Different North Country creators, myself and Chris are in there. A lot of fun stuff. This is the sneak peek. That's the most anyone's ever seen of that book. It's the most I've seen of it. And I was the co-editor. <laughs> and I paid for it. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Great job. Nailed it. Peace. Bye.